Greetings everyone and welcome to part 4 in the series on modeling and texture painting in Blender. So we've finally finished the model and we've UV unwrapped it and we're ready to start texture painting it. So the first thing that we need to do is come down to where it says object mode and change it to texture paint. Now if you notice our model turned white, uh, but in the UV image editor we need to change this from view to paint. Now we can paint in the, uh, in the image editor as well. Uh, so why did the model turn white? Um, that's because currently you don't have any texture created and no material assigned. So if we press T to bring up our toolbar, you see that right here, there's a little warning sign saying missing data. So come down to your add paint slot and select uh, diffuse color, the first option. And the default is 1024 by 1024 which is okay, you might want to go smaller, like half that, 512 by 512, but in this instance, I'm going to stay with 1024. And then click OK, and that creates your new texture. And now the model's turned black because the texture is, in fact, applied to it, but we still need to open it up in the, in the image editor. So if you come down here to the little uh, texture drop-down menu, and click it, just open the material diffuse color. Okay, so, I think we're ready to begin painting. So I'll come up here to my brush menu and I'll select the fill brush. And we won't need the tablet yet because we'll just be using the fill brush in this part just to block out the, uh, the base color. And down here I'm going to click on this little tab, the face selection masking. This lets me select different parts of the mesh and paint only on uh, whatever I have selected. So you can select things normally, like if I press A, everything is selected, and if I hover over these loose parts, then I can use L to deselect them. And of course you can also use B to box select, and you can use C, which is the, uh, the selection tool as well. Uh, but mostly we'll just be using L to select individual pieces. I'm going to raise the, the strength of this all the way up, and I'm going to select a greenish color, because after all, I have called this the Emerald X, so, so the blade is supposed to be like an emerald stone. Okay, and so now we have the base color for it down, uh, but we still need to fill in the little cracks, so make sure that you select those as well. Okay, and then just fill those. And now let's use A to select everything. And then we'll deselect the head of the X with L. And this is going to be just like a normal metal, like a steel or something, but that doesn't really have, like real metal doesn't have a color, but we need to put down a base color anyway. And I think I'm gonna make it a little bluish, like a little bluish gray, even though the end result probably won't have a lot of that blue in it. Um, we'll just use this as a, as a base color. And what I mean by real metal doesn't have uh, a color, I just mean that uh, usually things like steel are, are mostly reflecting the world around it, so you see a lot of different colors in its reflection. So we'll talk a little bit about that when we're painting. Uh, but I'm also going to add that color to these two metal rings around the grip, and I'm just using C, which is the selection tool. If you accidentally select something that you didn't mean to, you can use the middle mouse button to, uh, to unselect it. Okay, so I'll just fill that with the same blue. And I think the rest of the metal we're going to do like a bronze or a copper type metal. So we'll select these pieces and the insides as well and also this ring and then this whole base will be part of that same bronze metal and these two little rings at the top as well Okay, so we'll just select something. It's kind of hard finding this color. Uh, it's a little orangish and yellow, but it's also dark. So have your uh, 
lower your value. Um, that's close, but again, it's just a base color, so we'll we'll work on it when we when we start painting. Okay, so let's see now what. Uh, these little bolts, actually, I wanted to make these the same color, that same blue uh, steel color. So let's select these with L. And then I can use the S key, which is the paint selection tool, which will select that color, and then I can just fill them. And also these spikes, we can fill them with the same blue. And now I think I want a warmer color to sort of separate all of those cooler colors. So uh, the handle I'm going to make like an orangish, like a sort of a deep uh, desaturated orange to start. Well, it'll probably become more saturated when we put some lighting effects on it. But uh, yeah, something to sort of balance out all of those cooler colors. Orange and blue are sort of complementary colors anyway. I see those two colors used a lot in different uh, different artworks in a variety of styles. Just a lot of a lot of blues and oranges together. And now I'm selecting everything that will be the uh, wood texture. And in this instance, we're going to be working sort of the opposite way. Uh, instead of putting down the base color and layering like shadows and lighting on top. We're putting down like a uh, the, the dark color first and we're going to be building lighter color on top of it to show the layers of wood. If that doesn't make any sense now, it will when once we get to that part of the uh, to that part of the series. So now that we have the colors all blocked out, we can start adding little hints of lighting and shadow. We still don't need the tablet. We still are just going to use the uh, the fill brush. But you notice that even though I'm in solid mode, because I'm not in textured mode, I'm still in solid, uh, Blender still is calculating lighting. Like here on the inside of this blade, it's darker. And then as it goes down and comes around, it becomes lighter. And that's because it's, it's calculating a directional light coming from above. And so we can actually use that as a reference in, in painting the light and the shadow on the model. So uh, if I, I can use press A to mask everything. And then I'll use the S key over the blade to select that green color again. And then just lighten the color up by increasing the value. Okay, and then I'll use C, which is the selection tool. And I'll just select the faces that I wanna paint. I think just these four and then I'll go ahead and add that color. Okay, so now I'll make the color a little less bright and select some of these faces down here at the bottom. Maybe these two, uh, because it's going to get less bright as it, as it goes down. And now you see if I go over to my material and I click on shade list, you can see that uh, while the whole model looks really flat, at least on the blade where we've started to add that lighting detail, uh, it's it's starting to show the uh, the actual geometry of the object. Okay, so we'll select some of these back faces, and we'll darken the value. Okay, and add that color. And now we need to lighten it up a little bit. And I'll just add this color to these bottom faces and this one on top as well. Okay, uh, I do think that maybe these uh, this shadow color in the back is maybe a little too dark. I'll just brighten that up a little bit. 
Okay, so I'm liking the way that that looks. And so now I'll, I'll come back over to my uh, properties window and click on shadeless under the material again. And you can see the full effect of that now. It has the, the light and the shadows painted directly on the model. Okay, so now let's move on to this next material. I'll use S to paint select that color. And I'm going to add these shadows in, so I'll select these uh, few faces. And, and again, I'm just selecting those faces that uh, are, are darker than the others. Uh, anything that's facing away from that, uh, that directional light that Blender is calculating. So, you know, these faces underneath here, for instance, are darker. And these are darker. And each of these spikes only has two faces, so I'm just selecting the darker of the two. And all right, I think that's it. So uh, make sure that you're you use the S to select that paint color, and then darken it up just a little bit, and then go ahead and add that color. And I think that looks a little light, so maybe I'll increase the uh, the darkness value. Okay, so next I will select these uh, faces that go along the base of the axe. Okay, and I will fill that. And you may notice that uh, Blender is calculating more than just three values with its uh, with the light. It's not just um, light, shadow, and base color. It's some of these faces that are not facing entirely away uh, from the light. They still seem to be a little darker, even though they're not completely in the shadow. So we can select some of those faces and uh, we'll still make them darker, but they won't be quite as dark as those other faces that are completely in shadow. So, you know, this one for instance. And a lot of this is just going, going to be blended in uh, at the end anyway when we do our, our detail. But uh, again, it just never hurts to begin with if, if nothing else, it's it's something of a reminder while you're painting that the, you know this area has to remain a little less dark than the other shadowed areas. Okay, and on this back side of the X, the the hook part, again because it sort of curves around and it's facing away from that directional light, despite the fact that it's on the top, uh, these faces are going to be slightly darker. Okay, maybe even a little more drastic than that. Okay, so that, that looks okay. Okay, so I think we can start painting the lighter areas now. Uh, so I will increase the value, make it brighter, and then just select the faces that are lighter. And you may have noticed that I'm ignoring the faces that uh, that are on the center of the model. Just I'm just doing the borders, and that's okay because we'll we'll worry about the lighting and the shadows for uh, the rest of the model when we're painting them by hand. Uh, right now, we're just adding the hints of light and shadow on the places that would catch it most drastically. Okay, and because these spikes are so low on the model, I think I might just leave them there. Uh, their base color. I'm not going to add any light to them, but we'll add light to the rest of it. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And again, so if, if we make this shadeless now, we can see that uh, that's calculating some of that light. And you know, in the instance that you were making this for like a low poly video game, ideally you would want this to be shadeless. Okay, so let's select the color of this grip with the S key 
and then lower the value a little, make it darker. And I'm just going to use C to select some of these faces that uh, that are that appear to be overhanging a little, so they would be uh, kept from getting as much light. They would be in shadow, so I'll just darken those faces. And the rest of that grip, I think we're just going to do with the brush when we get into painting, and and that'll actually probably be the first part that we paint. Okay, so now we can start adding some of the shadow into this bronze. I'll type A to mask everything and then use the paint selection tool to uh, deselect some of these areas. Okay. And again, if you accidentally select a face that you didn't mean to, you can use the middle mouse button to, uh, to mask that again. Okay, so I'll use the paint selection tool and then lower the value and, and add that shadow in. Now up here I can select these faces. Okay, so we're almost done. All right, so I'll add that dark color in. And also the uh, the back side of these little brackets uh, because they're going to be mostly in shadow as well. Okay, so we can add some light now. I will just reselect this uh, the base color with S and then brighten it up a bit. And I also might adjust the color a little bit so it's uh, not so orange. Uh, we know with metal, metal is maybe one of the only materials uh, that exists that has a, it actually changes the color of the light reflection on it. So, um, you know, copper tends to have a bit of an orangish uh, light reflection and uh, bronze maybe a bit uh, yellowish. So I just added a little bit of yellow to that, that color. Okay, so these little pieces are fairly straightforward, but uh, you know we're getting down to the ring part, and the ring is going to be a little more challenging. Uh, so I can I know I can select these faces on on the top, and then the uh, the bottom, the inner side of the ring would catch a little bit of light. So I can add all of those lighter values. Okay, but so on the ring, we need to select that dark shadow color and do the faces underneath. And also maybe these ones on the inside. Okay. And again, we'll be getting most of that detail when we just paint by hand. But I think we're finished now blocking in all of the colors and the next step will be to actually start painting the detail. Uh, but because we're ending here and we've already added some color to our texture, it won't be saved in Blender until you come down here to image and then click save as image and then uh, you know save it here. And now when you uh, reopen Blender, you'll still have your texture. Otherwise it will just be completely erased. But that's it for this part. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.